Excellent. Okay. So a little more stuff like we were doing last time. Um, I guess I'm not sure how this works with the EOC for you guys. I think it has to be through your quote unquote home zone school. I don't think we uh, do anything with it here, but I'm sure you've probably been contacted about it. But I know it's coming up pretty soon, so I just wanted to do some reviews for you, help you guys out with that a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going. Say goodbye to Bugs and Daffy here. Okay, so this one looks a little scary, doesn't it? But again, all you have to do is do what we normally do, just do algebra stuff, right? All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we don't like fractions. We need to get rid of this fraction, right? So here's what's going to happen. If you multiply this whole thing by the negative 5 on the bottom, then these are going to go away, okay? So we can just cancel this stuff out. Then we're going to get this. So we're going to have 7. And we have the minus 4, minus 8 over 3x, and that's going to equal 28 times negative 5. Well, that sounds like a calculator thing, doesn't it? Put my calculator in. One moment. All right, so we'll clear them out. So we're going to do 28. Whoops, try it again. 28, there we go times negative 5, so that would be minus 140. Okay, so normally we're kind of in this whole idea of distributing over on the left-hand side, but before you do that, always check this. Notice that we have a 7 out front, so that means we're multiplying by 7. So the question is, if we divide both sides by 7, does it divide evenly into negative 140? And as we know, 7 goes into 14, so I think we're in pretty good shape here, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to divide both sides by 7. So again, this goes away. So I'm left with just the minus 4, and then minus 8 thirds x, and then minus 140 divided by 7 will give us a negative 20. Okay? So that's where we're at so far. All right, so next thing we can do is go ahead and add 4 to both sides. Let's move him over here. Because, again, when you're solving for x, you're trying to get everybody that is an x to the other side, right? So these guys are going to cancel out. So now I'm left with minus 8 over 3x, and that equals negative 16. Okay? Now, a lot of times they talk about flipping this fraction and multiplying, and that works. That works fine. But sometimes it's a little less confusing to think of it this way. Again, let's clear that fraction. So if we multiply everybody by 3, right? So I multiply this first thing by 3. The 3s are going to cancel, right? So we cancel those out. I'm going to get negative 8x. And then don't forget, you've got to multiply this side by 3 as well. Okay, so we go ahead and do that. And again, if you're not sure, please use your calculator. All right? So if we break out our calculator here, then we say... We get 16 negative times 3 is minus 48. Okay, so we're getting close now, right? So we do a negative 8. We divide by on both sides. So again, these will cancel out. just gives me the x, right? Two negatives gives me a positive. And 48 divided by 8 is 6. So all that scary-looking stuff, if you just kind of break it down step by step, not so bad, right? Okay. Any questions on that? I 
I see Gabe has joined us. Good morning, Gabe. All right, so again, don't let a scary looking problem freak you out because as you saw, we did just some basic steps like we always do and we came out just fine. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and check out another one. All right, so this one says, which values in the domain of the function f of x equals minus 6x plus 11 with a range of these guys? So it says select all that apply. Okay. So remember the range is the y values. And remember f of x is a fancy version of y. <laughs> and that is a real fancy version of y that we can't read. Let's try it again here. Hang on. All right, one more time. So remember, this is just a fancy version of Y. That's as good as it's going to get, I guess. Okay, so here's what we do. We're going to say, well, minus 6X plus 11 equals minus 37. Okay, so we're using the first guy here. So if we subtract 11 from both sides, right, then we get minus 48 equals negative 6x. Divide both sides by the negative 6, right? And we get x equals 8. Okay, so there's our first answer. So then we just kind of repeat the process. So then the next one, change up colors here a little bit, we get minus 25. So we do minus 6x plus 11 equals minus 25 this time. So again, subtract off the 11. Minus 6x, these guys go away equals negative 36. Okay. So we divide both sides by negative 6 and get x equals positive 6. All right, so that's that guy. All right. So I get the feeling it's going to be 4 and 2. Now the other way you could do that if you don't want to do that stuff is you can plug in numbers and see if you get the answer they've got, all right? So let's try that for the, the next one. So like I said, we're kind of seeing a pattern. We had eight, we had six, we're thinking, okay, let's try four. All right, so if I plug in four, so I would have minus six times four plus 11. Minus six times four, that's minus 24 plus 11 is negative 13. I see negative 13 there, so I'm thinking that guy. So let's try the two then. All right, so we go minus six times two plus 11. So it's gonna be minus 12 plus 11 does in fact equal minus one. All right, so there's our guys. And you can only have up to four answers, right? Because they give you four answers for the range. So the domain is just the X values. So that's our guys. So again, you can try that either way. You can try plugging in numbers and getting an answer like this, or you can do the algebra like we did over here. It's really your call. Okay. Questions? All right, Chloe's good. What about your other two? Taylor, Gabe, any questions? So again, the moral of the story is even though it's the EOC and it's kind of scary, I get that. 
just do your regular algebra stuff and you'll be fine. Just do the stuff we do all the time, okay? Sometimes they present in a little bit of a weird way like they did here. And the biggest part is just trying to figure out, well, what are they asking me? But once you figure that part out, the rest is pretty simple because it's stuff you've been doing, okay? Let's go ahead and check out another one. Okay, so these are actually pretty easy. So it says, write a radical expression in rational exponent form. So rational exponent means a fractional exponent, okay? So the moral of the story of this one is this. The guy out front is the bottom of the fraction, and the guy on the inside is the top of the fraction. Yep, just that easy. So the guy out front is the bottom, the guy inside is the top. End of story. That's it. You need know nothing else. And if they give it to you this way, same deal. This guy here is going to go out front on the square root sign, and this guy is going to go inside with the variable. So sometimes I'll ask you for it and go the other way. All right. So good. Cool. All right, let's move on. All right, so which of these coefficients indicate a strong linear correlation? So this is another a select all that apply. All right, so here's what they're saying. Linear correlation means you have a bunch of data points, right? The closer they line up to being on a straight line, the stronger the correlation, okay? And notice these correlations are all between one and negative one. So if you have a really strong correlation, they're all lined up on a line, right? It's going to look like this. You have a line going straight up. So think of the slope as being a positive one. So the closer you are to one, the stronger your correlation. Okay? So this guy's pretty close to one, right? He's 0.98. So I think that's a good answer, right? You know, 0.79, that's, that's pretty good. But it's not as strong as this guy, right? So since they just say... A strong linear correlation they don't say positive they don't say negative so the opposite of this is when you have a negative correlation that just means is whatever your x value goes up your y value goes down uh, an example of that would be like um, if you're going to a drive-in movie and they only charge you by the car. So if they charge 20 bucks a car and two of you go, you have to each come up with $10, right? But if four of you go, then you all have to just come up with $5. And if five of you go, you only have to come up with $4, all right? So the point of the story is the more people you have, that'd be your X value, the less money you have to each come up with. So this would be a negative correlation. Then what you're looking for here is something close to minus one. And this is just slopes, right? Positive slope goes uphill, right? Negative slope goes downhill. So now we're looking for something that's pretty close to negative one. So that'd be that boy right there, right? That's the best we've got for that one. Okay. So it says, which of the following correlation coefficients indicate a strong linear correlation? So you're looking for something close to one or close to negative one. And that'd be our boys right there. The, the A and the F. Questions? Okay. So that's more of a definition thing. That's not really much of a math thing, to be honest. But sometimes that's good. Take a little break from all the calculations, right? Yeah, it's pretty easy. So that's what they mean when they talk about correlations. Okay.
All right, move it on. Okay, so it says a scatter plot suggests the association between the value of x and the value of y is linear. So it says, what is the y-intercept rounded to two places of the linear function that represents the line of best fit? Wow. Okay, so this is one you can just kind of eyeball, right? So first things first, you just kind of want to draw a straight line here as best you can. Okay, so something like that. Maybe a little higher, but eh, okay. All right, so the point of the story is the y-intercept is up here someplace, right? So based on that, what's the only answer that makes sense here? So which of these answers make sense? Yeah, right? Because these guys are too small, right? That's down in here someplace. It's like, no, negative. Wait, what? No, right? So pretty easy. The only reason they probably included this one is if somebody thinks they're looking for the slope, that would be a negative slope. So the slope might be about negative two like that, but we're not asking for the slope. We're asking for the y-intercept. Okay, but keep that in mind, because if this had asked you for the slope, then A probably would have been your answer. Because that's the only one going downhill, that would have been the only one with a negative slope. Capiche? Sweet. Okay, let's continue on. All right, so this one says a graph of 3x minus 6 is shown along with the dashed line y equals x. So it wants to know what is the inverse of this. So the inverse means we're going to do a mirror image around y equals x. Okay, so the easy way to do these is there's three steps to figuring out an inverse, okay? Step one, we're going to call f of x y. This would be y equals 3x minus 6, okay? Step two is switch x and y and only x and y. So where we see the y, call him x. Where we see the x, call him y. So now all of a sudden it's going to be x equals 3y minus 6. Okay, so that's step two. Step three is solve for y. Okay, that's easy, right? So we're going to go plus 6. All right. These guys go away. So now I'm going to have 3y equals x plus six okay so our last step is divide everybody by three okay so the way they normally write this these guys are going to cancel right so we have y equals so x over three they probably write that as one third x okay and then six divided by three is plus two So that is the inverse. And then what we would do if we we're going to plot this thing, we're going to have plus two. So it means we're going to cross about here, right? And then a slope of one third means we're going to go up one and over three. So that's going to be right there. And then we draw our line. This is going to be terrible. <laughs> So there you can see it's kind of a mirror image of this guy. 
that's what happens. But it's easier just to actually do the calculations than try to plot this thing. Okay. Questions on that one? So again, to figure out the inverse, call f of x, y, switch the x and the y, but leave everybody else where they're at, and then solve for y. Yeah, it's pretty easy. I guess this wouldn't be too bad to plot, but then you'd have to come up with the equation anyway. So you might as well just do the algebra. Because the way you'd plot this thing, you say, okay, well, this guy is at x equals 2, so I'm going to put it on y equals 2. And then since it's touching x equals y, which is this guy again, if it's touching x equals y here, that means the other one's going to touch as well. Because like when you touch the mirror, it looks like, you know, your finger is touching your reflection's finger, right? But then you'd still have to figure out what the equation was here. All right. Cool. Moving on. All right, so this says simplify each of the following expressions to determine which are linear. So again, this sounds like one of those check all that apply kind of things, right? Okay, so here's the hack on this one. Do linear equations have x squareds in them? Yes or no? Does a linear equation have an x squared in it? You got a one out two shot. No, good. So what we're looking for here, what they're really asking us is which one of these will the x squared cancel out, right? So let's just run down through the list here. So this guy here, so all I have to worry about is the x squared. So don't care about anything else. Nice, okay. So x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Nope. 2 times 2 is 4x squared minus 5x squared. That guy doesn't cancel either, right? All right, so this guy. 4 times 3, that's 12x squared minus 6 times 2. That's minus 12x squared. So 12x squared minus 12x squared. Yeah, buddy. X squareds cancel out. So that's really all they're asking you for is where do the x squareds cancel out? But they like to write it with a lot of weirdness, right? So the same deal here. So we got 3x squared minus 2x squared. Nope, he's not canceling, right? And the last guy, we've got 4 times 2. So it's going to be 8x squared and minus 8x squared. So that guy cancels, right? So that's our guys. Make sense? So yeah, so when it asked for linear, it just meant no x squared. Because linear is just some x term and some number. So the rest of that stuff doesn't really matter. But what they'd like you to do is they'd like you to like do the whole thing for all of them. And by the time you do all that, the test is over, right? Because <laughs> you've been spending like 10 minutes on this question. So learn how to avoid that kind of stuff. That's what we want to do. All right. All right, we'll check out a few more. We'll call it a day. All right, so this one says... Let f of x equal x squared plus x minus 6. And g of x, so the g function equals x squared minus 4. So it says find f of x plus g of x. That just means we're adding these guys up. That's combining like terms, right? Well, that's easy. All right, so one way you can do these is you can just line them up. We've got an x squared, I've got a plus x, and then I've got a minus 6, okay? And then we're adding these guys, so we're going to add x squared. There's no x, so we're going to skip over here. We'll put the minus 4 right there, 
All right, then we just go term by term. So I got one X plus another X, one plus one. Last time I checked is two X squared. Nothing for this guy, so just bring him down. All right, and then minus six and minus four more is minus 10. Boom, that's that guy. Easy. All right, and then the next guy is going to be subtracting. So same thing, we're going to do f of x. So we do x squared plus x minus 6. And then this guy, we've got to switch the signs on this one. So this will be minus x squared, and then minus a minus 4 is plus 4, right? Add them up, x squared minus x squared, that's 0, right? So we have x here, and then we have minus 6 plus 4 is minus 2. That's that guy. Questions? All right, let's try a couple more. All right, so Gwen has already read 130 pages of her 400 page summer reading book. And by the way, I, I was appalled. <laughs> the first time I found out that they made you guys do that like stuff over the summer. I'm like, are you kidding me with this? Could not believe it. <laughs> and it wasn't until, I, I think it wasn't until I came down here, you know, and maybe, I think it was maybe one of the students I was tutoring, they mentioned how they had to do all this, like, math homework over the summer because that's what I was helping them with. And I'm like, what do you mean you have to do math over the summer? What is this noise, right? So I was just like, oh, that's so wrong. Trust me, when I'm off for summer, I'm not doing stuff for school. Just saying. But I guess that's just me. I'm old school and lazy. <laughs> All right, so let's try this thing. All right, so this one says she's read 130 pages of a 400 page book. If she reads at an average rate of 45 pages per hour, that's a lot of pages. I don't think I could read 45 an hour. Wow. Okay, so she's a good reader. How long will she need to finish the book? Write and solve the equation to find the answer. Okay, so where she's at right now, she's already done 130 pages, right? And she needs to get to 400. That's a long book, too. Okay, so she reads 45 pages every day, or every hour, excuse me. <laughs> I'd be lucky to read 45 in a day, but that's just me. So 45 pages in an hour. She doesn't want them speed readers or something, right? So we go like that. Okay. So this is just simple algebra thing, right? So she's... Got a 400 page book, but she's already taken care of 130, so we can get rid of those guys. She's already done that, right? Cool. All right, so then these guys are going to cancel, so we get 45 pages in an hour. All right, just so we don't mess up, we'll use our calculator. We we'll go 400 minus 130, so that's 270, right? So 270. All right, so she's got 270 pages to go. She reads 45 pages an hour, which again, I think is impressive. So we're just gonna divide by the 45, all right? So the number of hours we need is just 270 divided by 45. So we still got a 270 there, so we divide by the 45. So she could knock this book out in six hours. Pretty impressive. Questions on that one? OK. 
Cool. All right. We have time for maybe one more. Let's take a look at that real quick. Okay, so this says a local supermarket sells chicken for two forty nine a pound and pork for three nineteen a pound. Todd buys C pounds of chicken and P pounds of pork. Why well, sure? It says which of the following inequalities represents that Todd only has forty dollars to spend? Okay, so forty bucks. That's a, that's gonna be a lot of meat. I hope he's got a big freezer or something, right? All right, so the first two answers don't make any sense, right? Because that's only buying one or buying the other, right? So it sounds like he's supposed to buy some of each, right? So we could probably say these two guys are out, right? So which one of these makes more sense? C or D, what do you think? Yeah, I think D makes more sense because here they're at least including the price per pound of each one, right? Where up here they didn't do that. So this would be like saying, well, you know, the chicken's on sale for a buck and the pork's on sale for a buck, and quite frankly, if they're charging you a dollar a pound for meat, ooh, I don't think I'd buy it, because there's probably something wrong with it, right? So yeah, I think that's our guy. Okay. All right, guys, well, that's a good day's work, I'd say. Why don't we uh, stop here for today, and we'll do some more of the COC stuff tomorrow. But again, I'll thank you for stopping by. And uh, we'll see you next time.